you're sounding an awful lot parallel. You're, the, the conversation is moving in a similar direction to one I had with Sam Harris recently. I would think it's very different, but happy to hear more. He identified on an episode that I did with him not long ago, the fact that we have lost trust in our institutions and yet abandoning them is also uh, wholesale is, is also not an option. Sam also tried to say, I can see the problems on the, I, Sam, can see the problems on the right, and I can see the problems on the left. And there is a group of people who have allowed their irritation with the left to color their thinking to the point that they now are in a right-wing situation without understanding the dangers on the right. I think Sam is discounting the idea that once people wake up to the to the concept that they were living in an orchestrated Truman show that they did not understand, they're not going to have the idea of like, oh, sure, the vaccines were a little bit more dangerous than claimed and maybe a little bit less effective and maybe we knew a little bit more about the lab leaks. Like, no way. You spat directly in my face and told me not only that it was raining, but that I was a crazy person for thinking that you spat directly in my face and you piled up how many Nobel laureates to, to defend uh, the idea that any inquiry into the origin of this virus was racism. It's like, you're dead to me. And I think that that's what people are not understanding in the Democratic Party. On Increasingly, the basic attitude is, Whoever this class of people is that crawled into our elite institutions is just dead. Like there's nothing Anthony Fauci could say at this moment that I want to hear. It's not that I don't think that he doesn't know virology or epidemiology. I know I can't trust him because of the way in which he looked into my eyes. And then, you know, when Stephen Ve uh, Colbert is dancing with syringes singing the vaccine song, and Ariana Grande, you know, is in a super highly produced number from like hairspray, but converted to vaccines uh, with a giant picture of Anthony Fauci and everybody's celebrating like it's a May Day celebration. Um, I get it. I live in a completely fake world. And I wrote an article about this in 2011 on Kfabe, which is the system of lies that undergirds professional wrestling. So now you're you've woken up to the idea that. You've spent your life watching something like Major League Baseball or Premier League Soccer or whatever it is, and it's all fake. And now you don't know who you are. You don't know what your country is. You don't know what a ballot box is. You have no idea what news is or media. You don't know what a university is actually teaching. You've got people running around who are calling themselves scholars who publish in scholarly journals and sit in scholarly seats, and you can tell what they're saying is completely wrong and it's directly in their area of expertise. So the thing about pattern matching that I said was there are still many people who are scholars, who are in positions of authority inside of highfalutin institutions that presumably do want to do good and do want to deploy their skills in a way that does this, is it a case that every single institution is completely wrong? Or is this reflexive skepticism yeah. being tuned up too highly to the point where there is skepticism about things that don't deserve it? And how do we determine between the two? Okay, so we have to talk about the institutions that are fighting back. Twitter, which has become X, is not on the same standard that the uh, Facebooks are, or Google is, Elon is doing something different. We can talk about what. The University of Chicago is still fighting. Uh, my daughter just graduated from the University of Chicago. Congratulations. So I, yeah, I'd never mentioned where she was while she was there. Um, it, it is, it needs, it, it needs support. We have to support the schools that fought back, for example, I believe Ohio State fought back, and there's a school in Oklahoma that fought back. And leading that charge is the University of Chicago. We have organizations like FIRE uh, that promote free speech. Uh, we have professors who are taking on some risk, like Jonathan Haidt. But we're not seeing the Noam Chomsky effect. 
where you do amazing research and they have to put up with every crazy idea that comes through your mind, right? That's important. Look up a person named Serge Lang in mathematics and something called the file to understand how dangerous it is to screw with real scholars. What happens? Give us the 30,000 foot view. You know, pe they put, people tried to put, like say, uh, Sam Huntington into the National Academy of Sciences, who was an architect of the Vietnam War. And Sirs Lang just said, I looked through his papers, I find the following mathematical statements. This is not science. Why is this person in the academy? And then they fight back. And I fought back with Sirs Lang when he was at Harvard, um, where we tried to engage Sam Huntington on, on that topic. You can't have these dangerous people running around. That's why all of us are discredited. Maybe you haven't noticed this. But like Jordan Peterson is discredited. Sam Harris is discredited. Joe Rogan is discredited. Brett Weinstein is discredited. Ben Shapiro is discredited. Barry Weiss is discredited. Everybody <laughs> is discredited. Tim Poole referred to it as the IDW's walking corpse phase oh. at the moment. Well, my point is this... Personal destruction is the coin of the realm. And some of the personal destruction that you see that looks organic is, is orchestrated as well. And we're just in this thing where, in my opinion, what you're looking at is something called deconfliction, but people don't know what that is. Deconfliction is supposed to stop what are called blue on blue incidences. So a blue on blue incidence is you have two branches of government that don't know that they're operating covertly. So maybe you have an investigative team and an undercover team, and the investigative team is about to blow the cover thinking that they've got a target, but is actually an undercover agent. So what they're supposed to do is they're supposed to check in with these centralized systems and say, do you have any assets in this arena we're about to move? Yes, we do. Oh, okay. So they find out, and this is supposed to stop blue on blue. The interesting thing is, even though there are three systems called Safety Net, RIS Safe, and Case Explorer, you can't use them unless you are an official part of the government. So I called up one of them, had a half an hour conversation before I started asking about Jeffrey Epstein, and then they immediately said, this call will be terminated in five seconds. Uh, for I, I, Maybe it was case, case Explorer for South Florida, something like that. What happens when you have a civilian that's not signed up for non-disclosure under no rules? You're an American citizen with full right to free speech, and you stumble on something that you're not supposed to know about. That is a deconfliction problem that nobody has ever solved. So the first thing I'd like to throw out is if we have three separate systems to keep like the intelligence community and local police departments from tripping over each other. What do you think we do when ordinary citizens get wind of something amiss that's some super secret operation? And my claim is we discredit them. We pre-bunk them in the language of the GEC, I believe. You see, we're all familiar we're all familiar with debunking misinformation and disinformation. You've got some disinformation that's spread it around and we debunk it by giving you the truth. What happens when somebody is spreading the truth in a way that is unhelpful to a statecraft level narrative? Well, we didn't know what the words were, but we just found out and it's you pre-bunk the malinformation. Now, if you didn't grow up knowing what malinformation is, here's a, Quick refresher, malinformation is actual information, but it's harmful. Right. The equivalent of politically incorrect incarnation. Well, or, you know, you're trying to make sure that uh, there's support for the war in Ukraine and somebody actually realizes that things are much more desperate than, than they thought. Well, that would be deleterious to our, our efforts if the objective is to get Putin to capitulate. So now you have to pre-bunk the malinformation, which means destroy the reputation of the person spreading the information that's countering the official disinformation and misinformation. So it, it, I can't work out why anybody's confused and why they're having trouble existing in the- Stay in school, kids. Um, <laughs> so the point is, I've got all of these friends who are pre-bunked malinformers. 
That's what, what a I, club. What a club to that's be. That's what in. I do. I'm a pre bunked malinformant. There's I, never been I, a sexier I, title. Actually. I spread right. malinformation. Yeah. And I need to be pre bunked. So of course I'm going to be a grifter. I'm going to be, I don't know, a charlatan. I'm going to, well, he's over. Can we stop trying to make Eric Weinstein a thing? Blah, blah, blah. And there's, you know, giant farms of, of people and bots that are dedicated to spreading bad feelings about anybody who's going to contradict narrative. Well, don't forget as well that the coordination doesn't necessarily need to be there because the incentives align online. For There's an emergent part. Yes. There's a non-emergent part. Correct. I will not agree with anyone who tells me it's all one or the or all the other. But part of this is actually coordinated. Yeah. So close that loop yeah. on the agentic sovereign individual existing in the world. Holy fuck, I'm getting bukkakeed with this total awfulness of, of information here. Bukkake just means splattered in Japanese. That's why it's not a, a yeah, terrible sure. term to use. Yeah, absolutely it's, not. Thank you. It's actually been appropriated by the adult industry in a way that I think the Japanese should reclaim. Actually, Melissa Chen has probably done more to popularize this in intellectual circles than anyone else. So shout out to Miss Melissa Chen. Melissa Chen and Bukaki in the same sentence, oh, something yeah. that we weren't expecting well, today. She, she uh, I think she, there was a period of her life where she would use it in every public appearance, just sneak it in. Right. Okay. okay. The, bu the Bukaki of the gaps. So anyway, you have a situation where nobody knows what's going on. And I don't think Sam is comfortable, by the way, being here. Like you're in open water and you have all of these instructions about what to do when you're swimming near land, which is, you know, try to align yourself with the shore. Don't fight the current. And like, that's not where you are. You're just in open water and you're treading water and you don't know whether there are oceanic white tips around and you, you don't know whether you can keep this up for much longer. But there is no land. There's a big difference with Sam. Go a little deeper. Make that a little plainer for me. You cannot trust Harvard or nature. You cannot trust the Office of Management and, and Budget. Or the Lancet. Or the Lancet. Or the Bureau of Labor Statistics. You cannot trust any newspaper that I'm aware of. You cannot trust the CDC or the NIH or the WHO. Now, people will hear that and they'll say, oh my God, Eric, you're spreading distrust and fear. It's like, I'm a pastor. Shoot the messenger all you want. All of those institutions are out of control. And we all know it. And Entirely out of control? No. Mostly out of control. I did this on trigonometry. We, we have this anti-institutional point. How is it that the airlines can't keep my seat clean uh, and can't make sure that I'm able to recline it properly or that the Wi-Fi doesn't go out and then their planes never crash? So the institutions are functioning and not functioning. They're lying and telling the truth. They're getting it done and failing outright over and over again. And it's, it's even worse because if, if, if the planes crashed all the time, then you'd say, okay, well, these people are incompetent. But it's like this selective incompetence and madness. And what I think is, is that Sam wanted to treat this as, look, it's pretty annoying what's going on on the left. And it's pretty annoying what's going on with the institutions. But let's not, let's not lose sight of the fact January 6th. People don't feel that way. People feel like, wait a minute, I don't know which end is up. I don't know who's telling me the truth anymore. I can spot these lies that are so transparent. And this is the theory of lies as a checksum. So when you get a binary for a computer program that you want to install on your computer, you want to know, well, is this what came from Microsoft or did somebody adulterate it? And when I click on this thing, it's going to install ransomware on, on my machine. So there's something called a checksum which is generated by how the program was compiled. And it would be almost impossible to come up with a second program that would generate the same checksum. Verification. Yeah. If the checksum is off, I don't install the thing. And the checksums are all off. And that's why people are going crazy. And that's why, to your earlier point, isn't it interesting that we're not talking about the level of uncertainty, right? Like, 
this is not sustainable. So Sam is 100% correct on a lot of things that people are making fun of him for. And I assume that I will be uh, keel hauled all over Twitter for saying this. You cannot have a world without institutions. We're not built for it. We're just, there's no part of you that is prepared to generate all your own electricity and, and, and you know, kill all your own game and get your own clean water. And it's, just, you need an army. You, you need a police department. You, you can only play um, frontier, you know, Wild West so long before you realize that modern life can't be supported this way. And we can't go with the institutions we have. So we need institutions. We can't go with these institutions, not because the institutions are wrong, but because the inhabitants are wrong to a person. They've been selected for by this ability to lie because growth evaporated. That's one of my main riffs. We don't have to go into it, but it, basically that in the absence of real growth, everything turns pathological. And so it's just heartbreaking to see some of these people saying, look, we've always known that the institutions were wrong. We finally have the ability to prove that. Let's tear them all down. So that's a very popular perspective at the moment. Other people want to claim, let's cling to the institutions because we know we need them and we'll look past the fact that they're obviously lying about almost everything of importance. That's not really tenable. We can't vote these people out because like Diane Feinstein could beat me easily in a run uh, you know, for, for Senate, I don't know why, because the machine is stronger than actually the, the vision we had for democracy. So we've got, you know, Mitch McConnell having a temporary, you know, ischemic attack on camera. Um, we've got somebody post-stroke in Pennsylvania uh, having defeated Mehmet Oz. We've got Dianne Feinstein. We've got um, Nancy Pelosi trading up a storm. We can't get rid of any of these people. Joe Biden is way too old for this job and has been in government since he was 29 in 1972 when he won his Senate seat. This is a joke. It's beyond preposterous. And, and by the way, it comes out of not loving your children. How so? People who love their children don't drill holes in their children's life raft. And the modern world post-World War II was a life raft to get us to the next stage. And the number of older people I see liquidating everything so that they can live out their final days in the same style to which they've become accustomed is impossible in a world where people love their children. In other news, this episode is brought to you by... Shopify. Shopify is the e-commerce platform revolutionizing millions of businesses worldwide. Whether you're a garage entrepreneur or IPO ready, Shopify is the only tool you need to start, run, and grow your business without any expertise. Shopify puts you in control of every sales channel. So whether you're selling satin sheets from Shopify's in-person POS or offering organic olive oil on Shopify's e-commerce platform, they have got everything covered for you. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce across the United States. Massive brands like Gymshark still use Shopify. That's how powerful it is. So if you want to start selling something, anything online, Shopify is where to start. You can begin a $1 per month trial period right now by going to the link in the show notes below or heading to shopify.com slash modernwisdom. That's shopify.com slash modernwisdom to take your business to the next level today. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you enjoyed that clip with Eric, then press here for the full-length three-hour episode. Go on. Press it. 